Hello everyone, how's it going? It's Faster Auto Keys here, and in today's video, we're going to show you how to change out the keyless remotes and the transponder chip to move the two chips from your original key and to move it into a new case. It's very common that these older Volkswagen keys have a messed up panic button. The buttons sometimes do not feel as well, and it is very important to change the case when you do have a rip like this because dust can enter inside the key which can eventually damage the electronic board. We have these keys available with and without a cutting service and with and without a chip. You can check out our website and we'll provide a link below in the description. If you already have two keys or more that are already cut to your vehicle it might be best that you just buy the key without a cutting service so that way you can just transfer the chip and then the blade as well to the new key instead of having another cut. However, if you only have one or you do not have a backup key, uh, we highly recommend a cutting service so that way you have another blade to the vehicle in case you ever need it. And if you'd like a key with a cutting service, it's very easy. All you have to do is text your support number with a photo of your key blade something like this where it is clear and we're able to see it and this is how we're able to provide a copy we have provided over a thousand cutting services like this on our ebay page and on our personal website check out the link below in the description and find what works best with you if you have a late 90s early 2000s volkswagen key with this design this tutorial is also compatible and we do have these keys in stock and if you have the newer 2010 and up Volkswagen keys, this tutorial is not compatible. However, we will create a tutorial and it will be in the description once it's available. We do have these keys as well. What you will need for this tutorial is a small Phillips head screwdriver, a small flathead screwdriver, and a regular size flathead screwdriver. Your original key will have three things inside. In the bottom part is the keyless remote and the battery and the top part is the transponder chip. In this complete tutorial we're going to show you how to change first the bottom half that has the keyless remote and the battery and the top half that has the transponder into a brand new key case. If you are only going to change the bottom part this is a very easy tutorial and it will be a little harder if you're trying to change the top part that includes the transponder chip. First thing we will do is change the bottom portion of the key that has the keyless remote and the battery and the first thing we're going to have to do is go ahead with both of these keys and separate the top and the bottom half. If you ever changed the battery before you're probably familiar with this step and generally you can just simply pull it out and it will separate and if it's not easy for you you can use a flathead screwdriver and you can push the two halves apart. There we go, we have the bottom and the top half separated and now go ahead and do the same process with the new key. There we go, we now have the two halves separated on the old key and the new key. Okay, now that we have the bottom half of the key available, we're going to go ahead and open this to access the keyless remote and the battery. These two pieces will pry apart like this and you can also use a flathead screwdriver if you're having a hard time. A little trick, if you have a tool like this that opens when you press the two handles together, you can place it right here and this will be the easiest way to open this key. But for the sake of the video, I'm going to open it with my hands and a flathead screwdriver.
there we go we now have the two halves of the key open and if you want to change the battery this is a CR2032 battery we're gonna do the same step on the new key case so we both have everything done at the same time there we go we now have the new key case open and as you may tell it's much easier to open this because it is new at this point we will remove the keyless remote and the battery from the old key to move it onto the new key. The easiest way to remove this remote chip is to place a regular flathead screwdriver right about here in the middle and you will be able to pry it apart extremely easily. There we go we have the keyless remote taken off and now we're going to go ahead and remove the battery. If you look carefully, you can pry the battery out right here where I have this small flathead screwdriver. There we go, we have the battery removed and as mentioned, this is a CR2032 battery. I will be using a brand new battery for this particular key and make sure that the negative side is facing towards you. And now we can go ahead and transfer the keyless remote. Make sure that the hole on the remote goes along with the pin inside the case so it will hold it in place correctly. And once you have the battery and the keyless remote in the right spot, go ahead and close the fob together. And look around all the sides and make sure there are no gaps. Go ahead and press the buttons. Make sure everything works. And you will find that our keyless remotes are very easy to press the panic button. And we made it like this so that it does not break like the original keys do. Now that the bottom half of the key is done, we're going to go ahead and move to the top half. Because we're going to remove the transponder chip that is inside this top half of the key. There is this little chip as shown earlier in the video that is needed to start the vehicle. Your vehicle will not start with a cut blade the way it is. It also needs to detect a programmed transponder chip. If you have the late 90s, early 2000s Volkswagen key style, there is a chance you do not have this transponder chip, which will let you skip this part of the tutorial. I believe it is at 2001 when Volkswagen keys started to use a mobilizer chip. So if we have a 1998 to a 2000, there is a good chance you do not have to do this part of the video. One way to check would be to try turning on the vehicle with the brand new key that does not have any chips inside. If the vehicle starts with this key, then that will mean you do not have a transponder chip inside. In order to access the transponder chip inside of this key, you will need to open this part. And as you can tell on the new case, there is a screw and this old key will also have a screw right there. We will have to remove the emblem remove the screw and then separate the two halves so we can pull the transponder out of this key. One of the easiest ways I have found this to work is to use a Phillips head screwdriver and you actually just drill where the screw is until you can access it and go ahead and remove it. I have now made a hole on the emblem and at this point I'm going to try my best to pry and remove as much of it as I can so I can see the screw easier. There we go, we have the emblem off and now we can see where the screw is. We now have the screw and we can go ahead and separate the top half and yes it will unwind itself and that is no problem. And apply a moderate 
amount of hot air either from a hairdryer or a little less from a heat gun in order to make the glue weak and easy to remove the transponder chip. There we go, we now have the transponder chip removed and we are ready to put this on the new key case. We're now going to open the top half of the key, but we're not going to open it completely to the point where it unwinds the blade. We're going to try our best just to open this key and open it just slightly so that we can put the transponder chip inside and close it. If it unwinds itself, we're going to go over how to rewind it at the end of the video. And I also recommend that you use some transparent Elmer's glue to hold the chip in its place and it doesn't rattle inside the key. I'm going to use the flathead screwdriver just to get a better grip. Okay, we now have the screw off and we're just going to open it just a little, turn it, and as you can tell right here, this is where you need to put the transponder chip inside. We're going to apply a very small amount of glue and then once I do this, I'm going to put the chip inside. Alright, I put glue inside already. Just going to put the chip. We're going to close it. Gonna place the screw back. We will be good to go. Okay, we now have the transponder chip inside the new key case, the top half. And now we're gonna use the top and the bottom half. We're just gonna snap these two together. And we're good to go. All right, there we go. We now have everything inside the new case and you officially have a, a brand new looking key with the original transponder chip and remote inside. This key in particular will have a cutting service, but if you are not going to order a key with a cutting service, you can go ahead and use the arm from the original key and just use it in place of this arm and you should be good to go. If for whatever reason the arm doesn't work, there is a pin that is holding this keyblade in place, which is right here. You will need something small like a needle and a little hammer, and you will have to hit this pin out of this arm, and the blade will come off. Then you can do this with the new key, and as you can tell, the pin is right there. And then you can put the original blade into this new key shell hit the pin, have it back in place, and from there you will be good to go. Once again, we have these keys in our store available for sale with and without a cutting service and with and without a chip inside. If you want a cutting service, send us a photo at our tag support number of your keyblade, something like this, and we'll be able to make a copy. This is the end of the tutorial. At this point, we're gonna show you how to rewind the flip blade mechanism if you are using your original blade or you accidentally unwinded it. Okay, we will now go over how to put this top half of the key back together and work so that when you press the button, the flip blade flicks up and it snaps in place when it's put down. First thing you will need to do is go ahead and grab the arm with the blade and you want to place it on this section of the key so it sits like this. Once you have this in place, if your spring and button is separated, make sure that this end of the spring that does not have this section sticking out goes into the button and turn it until you feel tension. So I immediately put it inside and I felt the tension so it was already good to go. But if you put it in at an angle, just go ahead and spin it until it goes in a little more. And now it stays in place. Alright, now we have three little arms that stick out of the button. There are two that are exactly the same, and then there is this top one that is higher. You want to go ahead and look at this section of the key 
and you will find that there is a little hole right here which is the very top you can tell that the arms of the button will align perfectly with this section so we're gonna put the top part this little arm right here right there so that it all falls in place you will know that you did a good job if the button completely sticks out like this and this is officially good to go now I would like you to observe the other half of the top end of the key and as you can tell right there near the top there is a little hole this little end of the spring will align perfectly with this little hole right there and then you want to turn this half of the key one complete rotation and you should be good to go as you can tell the little spring the end is right in that hole I was talking about we're gonna give it one complete rotation and it may come off just try again but in this case we are perfectly good to go and now you want to put the screw inside there we go we now have the screw inside and if we press the button it flicks perfectly and when you close it snaps in place everything is good to go thank you once again for watching this video check out the links below in the description and i hope you have a good one